In the previous video I showed you how I powered a resonance circuit consisting of a transformer coil and a capacitor with my function generator in order to wirelessly transfer power to a second LC resonator and thus illuminate an LED. Only problem was that the transferred energy was pretty low, mainly due to the limitations of the function generator and my coil design, which apparently also lacks refinement since it does not look like any other wireless energy transfer coil. So in this video let's improve the coil design and create an appropriate inverter circuit in order to transfer sufficient power to even illuminate a 21 watt light bulb. Let's get started. Let's start by having a closer look at a transmitter coil that I salvaged from a commercial charging station. The first main difference is the wire itself. Instead of a thicker solid wire that I used for my crew transmitter, this one uses over 100 strings of very thin wire. The reason is the so-called skin effect, which describes that a high frequent magnetic field can only penetrate a conductor up to a certain depth. At a frequency of for example 100 kHz, this depth equals a value of around 0.21 mm, which means most of the current in my thick wire will flow through the outer part of the conductor, instead of the inner part, which therefore seemingly increases its resistance. The thin wire with a diameter of only 0.09 mm minimizes this problem. But why is the resistance so important to begin with? Well, the loss factor, which describes the relation between the power loss and the overall output power, which we obviously want to be as low as possible, becomes lower with a higher product of K and Q. K is dependent on the positioning of the coils to one another, which will always be quite low due to air coupling. So we need a high value of Q to compensate, in order to keep power losses low. This Q value is the coil quality, which equals the inductive reactance divided by the resistance. That is why a low resistance and a high inductive reactance is important. To improve the reactance we could either use a high frequency or simply increase the inductance of the coil. The easiest way to do this is by creating more windings, but then again, more windings implies a longer wire and thus a higher resistance, which is not beneficial. Another way to increase the inductance is the second main difference of the commercial coil, which is the ferrite plate. By placing one underneath the coil, in this case underneath the coil of another wireless energy transfer kit, it can improve its original inductance of 44.6 microhenry to a value of 75.4 microhenry. But not only that, it also focuses the magnetic fields and reduces unnecessary emission. And with those guidelines in mind, we could start winding a self-made transmitter coil, pretty much according to the design of the commercial producer. But in such an application, I would still prefer a factory-made transmitter coil. Not only because I clearly suck at winding coils, but also because the datasheet offers tons of useful and also mandatory information. For example, that the coil quality reaches a maximum of 240 at a frequency of around 150 kHz. With its inductance of 24 microhenry, the necessary capacitance to use the 150 kHz as the resonance frequency would equal a value of 46.9 nanofarads. So I soldered a 47 nanofarad capacitor in series to the transmitter coil and another 47 nanofarad capacitor in parallel to the receiver coil, which is the same type as the transmitter. Then I created two bigger squares of acrylic glass for the transmitter and two smaller squares for the receiver, drilled four mounting holes through both pairs of the acrylic glass and secured both coils in the middle of the glass pairs through the pressure of the nuts and bolts that I used, right after I extended the supply wires of the coils. And just like that the transmitter and receiver was complete and did work pretty well by using my function generator as the power supply. But in order to increase the current through the transmitter, we would need to build an H-bridge with the help of MOSFETs in order to apply an alternating voltage to the loads, which should create a sinusoidal current due to its oscillatory properties. 
For that, I firstly created an appropriate schematic with the free Easy EDA circuit design software, in which I used my favorite ILZ 44N MOSFETs that will get controlled by two IR2113 MOSFET driver ICs in a bootstrap configuration. The control signal for the drivers will be generated by a 505 timer and a 74HC4049 inverter IC. And of course you can find this schematic and more project information as always in the video description. Afterwards I used the schematic as a reference to create the circuit on a breadboard. While it may look like a complicated circuit, its working behavior is not that hard to understand. Firstly, the 555 timer will create a PWM signal with a duty cycle of 50% and a variable frequency according to the position of a trimmer. That signal will then connect to the high in pin of the first driver and the low in pin of the second driver and thus turn on and off two diagonal MOSFETs simultaneously. The inverter IC will, like the name implies, invert the signal and provides it for the low in of the first driver and the high in of the second one, in order to control the other two MOSFETs. And just like that, an AC voltage is created, which did work acceptably well on the breadboard and created the sinus audio current through the transmitter. So I removed all the parts from the breadboard and started creating a more permanent version of the circuit on a piece of perfboard. Like always I tried to use silver copper wire for the most part, but still had to use a bit of hookup wire in the end. After the soldering was complete it was time to connect the transmitter, power the circuit and have some fun with the finished project. It was rather interesting to see that a pretty low input voltage for the resonator can actually transmit sufficient energy to even power bigger loads. And if you want more videos about the subject of wireless energy transfer, then let me know in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, stay creative and I will see you next time.